Um, and because you're constrained, in a way, it, it, it sparks more creativity, I think, because if you could notionally, like cook from any ingredient and using any pan that you don't even have, you know, and all that sort of thing, I don't know how long it would take you to decide what to cook. You could go on forever trying to decide. Welcome, Nigella Lawson. We are so excited to see you and chat with you because I understand you're going to be on a North American tour, speaking engagement. You're coming to Toronto, the first Canadian tour, first Canadian stop, and the only stop, I understand, at Massey Hall in oh, November. But this oh. is so exciting because Canadians love you. And well, I, and I love Canadians, and I love being in Canada. I'm sorry I'm not in more of it, but soon. But I Absolutely. am very haven't been I haven't been back to Toronto for a long time actually and I, you know and it's interesting because uh last time we spoke we talked about the pandemic and how you were you did a lot and you were on your own and you were still creating wonderful dishes and uh you were making the best of a very difficult situation as were everyone in the world at that time how has your life changed post-pandemic oh well it's it's difficult. I mean, obviously, you know, the biggest thing is being able to travel, you know, and I I don't mind. I didn't mind enormously missing out on the gadding about here, but I did. I did mind not seeing other skies, going back to places I love or the thought of going to new places as well. So that's very much, uh, diff, you know, that that's that's the biggest change and a very welcome one. I, I mean, I think obviously like a lot of people, I because we were forced into it and I, I have got used to a certain amount of solitude and I think I need more than I did before the pandemic or before the lockdowns. So I, I feel that is a bit of a change. I mean, what's... But I wrote, you know, I wrote this book in large part. I mean, obviously I'd started it in 2019, but I wrote it in large part and had to change it because of what was going on uh, in uh, sort of four months of solitary lockdown in 2020. And I felt in a way that really was a kind of a wonderful thing. It, it kept me company. The words kept me company. And I just did think, and, and in writing about food, even though at that stage people couldn't eat altogether, it was, it was, a, it was wonderful remembering those occasions when it had been possible and looking forward to when it might be possible again and without knowing. So I suppose in, in a way it feels that this tour, which I couldn't do last year, it came out um, in in Canada and uh, the US last year, but it wasn't possible then to do a tour. So I feel that this is a, that what's coming up is a bit of a culmination of my hopes and dreams, you know, during lockdown. And I, I feel very lucky that it's possible. That's wonderful. Tell me a little bit about how, uh, has your cooking style or, or, what you are sort of like nurturing in a sense, what have you seen changing in what you put on the table? Well, I mean, I feel that because, you know, I do a lot of cooking for myself now, I, you know, can be just as very selfish about, you know, you know, putting ingredients in that I am the only one in my family who likes them. And that, I have to say, I do love that. I mean, I feel there's a, there's a chapter on anchovies in this book. And, um, you know, I live with fish phobes uh, normally, or I did when the whole, you know, all the family's here. So obviously I'm, pre I'm pretty well just lying on sofas, dangling anchovies and, and eating them in this thinking, oh, it's so great. And I can make things with anchovies without having to think, well, will they find out? So all in all, that's rather wonderful. I, I often think that so much of the way we cook is, is governed by temperament just as much as where we are at what stage in our life or what what demands are put on us. So I'm always going to have my sort of temperament. I don't like 
I like a bit of a structure, but I don't like to feel organized out of all spontaneity. So I often have an idea of what I'm going to cook and then I can just take it where I want to while I'm cooking. And I think in that way, you know, I don't ever, I don't think ever, I'm not someone who thinks I must come up with a recipe. I cook my supper or I cook a little light lunch or I have some friends over at the weekend. And then after I've cooked what I want to eat, I think, I think that there is the makings of, of, of a recipe there. And I think for me, what I'm always most inspired by is just sort of opening a cupboard and then opening the vegetable drawer in the fridge, seeing what I've got to play with. And somehow, because you are constrained, I mean, could, you're always constrained in life, but with one thing or another, so it could be time and it could be just the ingredients. Um, and because you're constrained, in a way, it, it it sparks more creativity, I think, because if you could notionally like cook from any ingredient and using any pan that you don't even have, you know, and all that sort of thing, I don't know how long it would take you to decide what to cook. You could go on forever trying to decide. So it's much easier if you know, well, it's going to have to involve some leeks, which you roasted yesterday and left over and, and a cabbage and then maybe a few scraps of leftover chicken already. You've got something that you're halfway there and I've, but you have to think creatively so that it it's exciting or that it um, you've got to make things work with one another. And I love that. That's always a, a wonderful way of cooking, I think. Now, if you were to look in your pantry, what are your, your go-tos? Well, if I can, do, I feel that nearly, I mean, anchovies for sure, as I mentioned, anchovies go to, uh, I would say, well, I've got lots of little go I mean, when I cook, I feel that nearly every dish I cook, not every, but almost, starts with a bit of olive oil, some great finely grated lemon zest, garlic, and a few chili flakes. I feel there's so much, sometimes I put a bit of orange zest instead of the lemon. I feel all that is a very quick way of bringing um, depth and flavor um, to so many dishes, whether you're going to toss some Tuscan drained cut Tuscan kale in it, or whether you're starting off a stew. I think all that, those ingredients can, um, they're my little bits, the instant magic when I just know they're there and I could sort of stumble even if the lights were off to go and get them. Um, and, I, and I suppose a lot of my cooking is also what ingredients I turn to, it, you know, slightly, depends on what I have been cooking. If there's anything, you know, a bit left over, as I said, it's incorporating that. I think the thing is generally a cooking life, you're never quite starting from scratch. There's always a saucer full of something that needs using up. <laughs> I like um, that. <laughs> well, I recall when you came to Canada, years ago and you made a beautiful polenta cake that was based on an old venetian recipe but you put your own fine twist on it and <laughs> quite delightful actually and i thought it wow is, i've never it's had it's lovely just cooking you know it's lovely just in a way i think just fine you know there are always flavors i love lemons so lemons are always going to be quite apparent in food the food i cook and i i feel that it, the a little spritz can always be used to add such um, sudden brightness, quite useful if it's too teeny bit too salty, it might help balance it out. Although over salting is one of those mistakes that it's hard to, to resolve. Uh, but, but it, you know, I, I think that I suppose we all have certain herbs and spices we go towards. For me, certainly cumin seeds or ground cumin and uh, fresh thyme I, uh, pairing I absolutely adore and sometimes I have to I feel I almost have to hide them from myself so I don't go get that <laughs> them again because there's so much I think mint is a very un, underused herb in a it's lot very of humble and people cooking. forget about mint they do you know yeah, but... and and tarragon I've always been yes. curious about tarragon Yes, I love, well, you see, I love anything in the aniseed arena. So tarragon, which is it, which is a milder form, I adore. I mean, I, I use dried tarragon as well, 
Um, I know, I think, I mean, I, I was brought up with dried herbs and anyway, so I don't feel bad about that, but I certainly think the way they're dried is so much better now and captures much more of the flavor. Um, and they're, I mean, I think why dried herbs often are a bit of a mistake is, is you know, people never throw them away. I mean, you, you know, I, you can go into someone's cupboard and that, you know, people who are now, you know, 70 and they were given one of those little spice box things, you know, for their wedding uh, 40 years ago. And there's still some of the same herbs and spices in it. No wonder they just taste of um, sawdust, yeah. you know? So, but it, you know, I do, I'm good. a big supporter of, of dried herbs. Because yeah. you're right, they make them fresher now. You don't have to buy a big jar or, you know, with bulk stores and everything, you can just get like a couple of tablespoons. They have a long shelf life and mm. it actually is um, saving the earth in a sense because we're not, you know, food waste is such a, a, yes. a crisis point here. At one point you have the price of food is astronomical. The other people are still throwing food away because they don't know what to do with it or they yeah. think it's past it. So I'm all for dried herbs. I think, you know, a covered no, I think, food. But I also think they perform a different role than fresh. And often I think they can be quite wonderful when they're partnered together. A dried herb that goes in at the very beginning. I mean, I make, I often use a bit of dried mint, which is um, uh, far more peppery and um, musky when it's in dried form. And then at the very beginning of cooking something and I might add a bit of fresh mint. I mean, simply because I have a garden and as anyone, not a big garden, mean, as anyone knows that mint just runs, takes over. Um, uh, I So then I might add some teeny bit of, you don't want too much on something, but teeny bit of fresh mint at the end as well, whether it's partnered with some parsley or cilantro either, because it does, it's wonderful together and I love it also mixed with dill so it's a question of often you just it's finding a way of making the the flavors deliver something at various different levels if you think like a musical score you want some deep notes and then you want some higher uh, notes at the end and actually what cooking is doing you hope is not just playing notes but but beautiful chords if you were to impart some words of wisdom to people who are still a little hesitant in the kitchen, what would you say? Because just describing how you, you work. I, I suppose what I would say is this. Don't cook something. Don't set yourself off to cook something ludicrously complicated because it doesn't need to be complicated. Okay. And I think often it's so much better rather than think right I'm doing this recipe and then another one take a you know if there's a recipe that interests you that you know you feel you've got the pans for you've got the, the ingredients are not going to send you you know on a shopping expedition that leaves you exhausted and you and it's something that you you're keen to try out just think okay well try it do it once a week for four weeks by the end of it it you'll be so used to it you'll have it'll feel like it's gone into your bloodstream. So you'll feel you're cooking it, not anxiously um, sort of testing yourself. You're not, it's not an exam, you don't have to remember, but just when you cook something a few times, you can work out, and just for yourself is the easiest, because then you're not worried about other people's judgment. You can actually think like, do I, well, do I like those flavors together? If I really, I, would you want, would you prefer it with a different herb or would you prefer it, oh no, you want up the chili or put more garlic in. I think that in a way you've got to both learn to respect recipes, but also learn to ignore them as well at a certain stage. But you can only do that when you've cooked something a couple of times, three or three or four, you know? I need to get the hang of that. That's lovely. I like that. Too. Then you trust yourself. You have to trust yourself. So that doesn't come straight away. You know, you have to give yourself a bit of room. It's like when you start driving, you think uh, this is always going to be difficult. I'm never, I mean, you, I know that you don't tend to have like manual clutch 
you know, gear stick <laughs> ones. But you know, when you when I learned, that's all you learned, and you just thought, am I ever? You were just like in a nervous panic when you had to change gear, and then after a while, you don't even notice you're doing it because it all becomes goes into your into you, and it just is instant, and you can do it. And the same with with cooking, you don't have to say, oh, I've, I've got to check on the right and the left to see if cars are coming. Yeah, exactly. You do it. Agree. And I think the cooking is the same. I like that. I think that's really, really important and exciting advice from you. And we're so looking forward to seeing you, you know, I back to wait. Canada. <laughs> I cannot wait. Oh, so delicious as well. <laughs> oh, well. Thank you so much, Nigella Lawson, joining us today and uh, wishing to, you know, safe journeys and uh, we'll, we'll see you, you soon. Thank you so oh, much. Yeah, it's not long now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Take care now. Bye, Bye. now.